Hi, my name's Emily. Uh, I'm from Bath, but live in London. I have a company called Blaze, and we make innovative products for urban cyclists. And we're launching with the laser light. The laser light tackles the biggest cause of fatality, which has been caught in the blind spot. It's a front-facing bike light, but it has a laser, and it projects the symbol of a bike onto the ground in front of you. I was a girl that could do maths and science at school. Um, I did physics, maths, chemistry, and further maths. But all I wanted to be doing was art and design. So I ended up at Oxford University reading physics and I left to go and do product design in Brighton. I'd never been on a bike 2010, um, but decided to cycle the length of the UK for charity. So bought a bike, uh, trained for four months and got the biking bug really badly. So I went back to design school in my final year and decided to find the biggest challenge facing urban cyclists, um, really deeply understand it and then tackle it. And the biggest threat is, is personal safety in the blind spot. And it was a case of cycling around town and thinking, that truck just in front of me can't see me. If I was there, he could see me. Oh, project myself there. <laughs> it goes in your handlebars like a normal bike light. It's got two buttons, one for the light and one for the laser. You can have them both on independently or together. It's got a safety sensor, it's USB charge. The optics inside it are quite complicated. We're using a diffractive optical element, completely fully sealed, waterproof, aircraft grade aluminium casings, diamond cut. It's a beautiful bike light. I've literally just come off a plane from China. I saw my assembly line and final production, and um, it was one of, if not the most special moment of this whole entrepreneurial journey. It was, yeah, really exciting. <laughs> this has been years of, of thinking about it and, and imagining that moment of holding one in my hands. Yeah, it was very special. <laughs> I came to Hardware Battlefield because I've got a product that solves a real problem, and for some reason, nobody else has done it yet. I want to show the world the light for the first time. And I would like to welcome Emily to the stage of Blaze. You have six minutes on the clock and ready, set, go. Cycling is booming. In London, over half a million journeys are made by bike every day. But it's dangerous. Last year, over 3,000 cyclists were killed or seriously injured on Britain's roads alone. The most common cause of fatality is a blind spot incident or vehicles turning across an unseen bike. This is the exact problem my product tackles. Hi, I'm Emily, and I have a company called Blaze. We're launching the Laser Light, a radical innovation allowing a cyclist to be seen when they're otherwise invisible. The Laser Light is a front, high quality front white light that you have to have by law, but it also has a laser, and it projects the symbol of a bike onto the road ahead. Pretty bright in here, you can't see that very well. If you imagine being a truck driver with a bike in your blind spot you can't see, you see the image on the road in front of you before you see the bike in turn. The integrated optics are complex. We have the latest in laser technology, tiny direct green laser diodes. Originally developed for use in Pico projectors in mobile phones, this tech costs an individual hundreds of dollars. We also have a custom-built diffractive optical element, which creates the image that you see. It also distorts it, so when shown at an angle down to the ground, it's in perfect perspective to the driver. The laser light has various modes. You have bright, brighter, and flashing. And it also has a safety feature, meaning the laser cannot be used out of its bracket on the bike but the light can still be used on low power as a torch. We're using Cree LEDs, driving up to 300 lumens, as well as the latest LiPo cells. A full charge would last an incredible 13 hours. The laser light's aluminum casings are completely sealed, and it's fully waterproof. Its patented design is not only powerful, but it's also compact. There's not a spare cubic millimeter inside this. And the internal chassis is developed for both stability as well as heat management. The light is USB charge, as you can see here. And the backlit control panel also lights up to indicate charge level. The LEDs will also flash red or blue if you ever try to use this in excessive hot or cold temperatures. It really is the ultimate intelligent bike light. But not only that, it could potentially save your life. So where'd it come from? 
Well, I began reading physics at Oxford University, but left to go and do product design in Brighton. Having never been on a road bike, I decided to cycle the length of the UK for charity, 1,600 kilometers, and I got the biking bug very badly. I went back to my final year, determined to identify, understand, and then tackle the greatest challenge facing urban cyclists. The result was the laser light. Here today, just two years on, I have a company, a cycle mad team, and a concept in production. We've partnered with PCH International for our supply chain. We are one of their first accelerator clients, and this means that I not only have the same supply chain as Apple, but I also have a dedicated team of over 10 people on the ground in China. I'd argue the hardest part about a hardware startup is getting a crowdfundable prototype to full-scale consumer product. We've also secured distribution <coughs> with the UK's largest bike retailer, Evan Cycles. I can announce today that we've accepted some money from some valuable people. We have investment from Index Ventures, as well as the Branson family, as in Virgin. But we've got big plans. Plans to extend Blaze to other territories and develop the many other products that we're working on. I flew here to Vegas a couple of days ago, direct from China, where I saw our very own assembly line for the very first time, which was pretty mind-blowing. And I brought you this, the very first mass-produced Blaze laser light. And so we're launching it right now. Go check out blaze.cc, be a trailblazer, and pre-order a bite light. It could potentially save your life. Thank you. Very good, Emily. George, does anybody ride a bike? Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely a real problem, without it question. Thanks. You're, you're trapped there, <laughs> yes. You pull down our stage. So it's quite a bit heavier than a standard light. Is that, does that have more to do with the laser? Um, it's actually the, the battery. That's one large cell. We've got okay. um, the latest cells, which uh, were developed, were released just as we're de uh, developing it, which means you've got a 13-hour lifespan, which is pretty nuts. Um, it's 210 grams. Um, some lights are, are up to that, if not more. So it's um, I a sort of weighty quality feel to it, I think. And you elected to tackle both the light problem and challenge that we all have as cyclists, as well as the safety problem. What was the mentality behind that? What, what drove you to doing both in one rather than, I mean, most of us have accepted that we need lights for safety at a base level and to see where we're going. Yep. But, but I, I'm just curious where yeah, you yeah, yeah. thought from there. That's interesting. So um, when it was a prototype at university, it was just the laser. Um, I had a working prototype that was just the laser. But then I realized that I mean, you have to have a bike light by law. Um, every bike has to have a bike light when the sun goes down. Um, so we thought, well, why not, if it's going to be you know, an, an object you put on your handlebars, real estate on your handlebars as a biker is pretty, pretty expensive, as you know. You want to keep you know, not too much clutter up there. And it's a really powerful light. So over 300 lumens, you're not going to want more than that. You can also drive at 100 lumens, so it's not too dazzling in, in cities with other drivers. And do you have to make a decision in terms of where your light is aimed versus where the, the appropriate safety aim is for the laser? Yeah, so it's set for both for optimal use. So um, the light we designed to be, well, the, the laser is to be five meters ahead. Um, and the light is it's also got the um, side lights. So if you actually light it up, you can see the side light from where he's holding it right now. And you can see it from any angle. It flashes at just 100 lumens, not the full 300, because otherwise it's too dazzling. So is this the first product to have a laser incorporated in it that would Very be on first. the market? Um, what are the products that are out there today? Like, what do they cost without the laser? So if I just wanted to buy... A bike light? Yes. Um, in the UK, you can buy a bike light up to 900 pounds. Um, they're typically for off-road cycling to light up a wood or a forest. Um, but otherwise, be, the, kind of the sweet spot is at about 100 pounds. So was that $160, um, where you now got some USB kind of aluminum cased lights. Um, I'd argue before you even put the laser in it, that beats all of them on performance. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the laser. Thanks. Are you worried at all about um, like kind of where the projection of the laser goes? Like if someone mistakenly bumps it and it's just like shining into someone's car or anything like that? 
So our brackets, which is, is on that one there, you yeah. can see it's um, you set it up with an Allen key, and it's pretty damn robust. There's there's no chance of you actually kind of locking it out of out of sync. Um, the, the laser's got the defective optical element, which creates the image, disperses the energy, and makes it safe for human eyes. Um, so even if it was to accidentally get into a human's eye, it's completely eye safe. Okay, good to know. I've seen some stuff on Kickstarter that uh, projects that would draw li red lines ahead of you or behind yep. you. Was there a reason that the, the green bicycle was what you decided on? A few. Um, so the light lane projects lanes behind the bike uh, to show you how far wide to pass. I'd argue that if you can see the bike, you can see how wide to pass it. Um, our image is, is in front of you because the threat is actually ahead of you. It's vehicles you can see, but they can't actually see you and they turn across you. 79% of bikes hit are traveling straight ahead and somebody turns into them. Um, it's green because the human eye is most sensitive to light of that wavelength, 532 nanometers. That's so why our logo is green, just so you Yeah, I, I, I got that. I got, and I wanted to you know, keep in sync. Yes, it's good. And how do you plan to enter the market? Do you plan to go through the traditional bike industry channel, or are you trying to go direct to consumer? So I think we're hopefully going to do it the hard way. Um, we've got the biggest retailer on board in the UK, Evan Cycles, but ultimately I want to build up our community and sell direct to our customers from our website. Um, blaze.cc um, and we've been approached by some of the biggest retailers and distributors and we've got a, a growing bank of, of emails to hit if, if that time comes but I think to begin with we want to we kind of um, to grow our, our own distribution. And where do you see the company going for the products? You've got a single product that makes sense, it provides a lot of utility but what's next? There are so many problems for urban cyclists and there are so many urban cyclists. Um, and we want to be the brand who's, who's tackling them all. From personal security, the next one I'd identified is bike security. So we've got a, a bunch of things we're working on to do with locks, to do with intelligent tracking systems. Um, but I mean, everything, nothing's been re, 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 you know, designed for the bike for quite some time. Um, helmets, foldable helmets, um, there's a bunch of things we're, we're looking at. So we want to be the urban cycling for brands, global. So how are, you know, I, I love this name, by the way, the, the Blaze Laser Light and what you're doing. And I think um, with hardware in general, like consumer facing hardware, branding is very important. Could you expand a little more on how you're thinking about building out the brand? Because it's, it's very subtle on this device and you're projecting a, a bicycle instead of maybe the brand name. So how do you think about how you want to build the brand out? So we, um, we're clear that we want to be for urban cyclists, um, city cyclists. Um, Blaze, it came about, it was literally, as at university, bike, laser, Blaze was, was the name of my final year project, and, and here we are with the company. Um, but it's a name that people really like and stick with. Um, we've, we've fought quite hard for it and we've, we're keeping it. Um, and then as far as the brand goes, to begin with, it's very, it's just us. I've got a tiny team. Um, we're all bike mad. We're all on our bikes every day. Um, and, you know, you all look at the website, it's very personal. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's literally as we are. Um, but as we grow, you know, we're looking to see who, who our customers are. We're shipping product for the first time this month, um, and we'll learn a lot more about who, who, you know, who our fans are, who the people are buying our products, um, and the brand that we want to build. Very good, and we're out of time for this session of Hardware Battlefield. Emily, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, judges, for joining me up here. I hope you had a great time. Thank <laughs> you.